Hey, it's Simple from Navi and you're listening to TCR. Okay, so let's start. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. Episode 121, coming to you live, pre-recorded from an undisclosed location. The date, September 12th, 2018. The time, 8.38 p.m. Central Standard Time. Keeping it, keeping it, uh, like you said, around 8 o'clock. Within the 30 minutes, that's kind of our on time, for us, anyways. Yeah. Huh? Hello, my name is Tim. I will be one of your hosts for this journey into esports. Alongside me, as always, we have Anuj. He's the brown one to my left. If you are watching it on Twitch, which we stream What's up, every fellas? episode. Hello. Every single episode. Every episode is live on Twitch. And to the right, we also have, I kind of say, my left nip and my right nip. As you both are wearing your ninjas jerseys. Representing now, uh, that jersey doesn't make a whole lot of appearances, though. You guys uh, kind of seem like Fairweather fans. We talk uh, about them all the time. All the time. The it's love, the talk. hate, the love, the hate, the ups it's, and downs. You it's know. easy to talk. Hey, they've been so bad for so long. You gotta give it to. You gotta give us some credit that we've stuck by their side. And you, you just in got, a good time. You, you just got one. And about that. Ten. Like, I think it's our turn, isn't it? You it celebrated is. the last <laughs> one. You obviously won't be celebrating this one. Hey, you, never you never Jump know. Jump on. Jump on. We'll, we'll talk about that, though, because we will have another very Counter-Strike intensive episode as we are still in the major. We are now in the New Legends stage. Right? Legends that's stage. What, that's what yep. they call it? That's Legend what they call stage. it. Legends stage. Where you are not a legend for being in the legend stage, you have a chance to become a legend, a top eight of legends. It's very confusing, and uh, no one at Valve seemed to acknowledge that before they named it. But hey, that's what it is. We are Center Ring, the Center Ring. Hit us up on Twitter at the Center Ring. Our website tcr.gg. Our Discord information is all there. YouTube, which is a little out of date, I'll catch that up on this weekend. Though. I'll have some time to catch up on YouTube stuff up there don't worry uh, other than that let's get into the show gentlemen because like we mentioned we are in the legend stage for this face it major the challenger stage wrapped up uh we did a show i should say next week keep an eye on our twitter because we are going not we're not going to record on wednesday just with the way the timing works out we want to preview the bracket stage because it will be easier to discuss for the swish stages we were meh you know anything can happen right there's no point in waiting to talk about it we're, we're a day behind we're not too far back no and i'm almost glad we did wait because there is no way we could have predicted all of the upsets that happened today for the major. There's no way if, if if any of you would have told me the matchups from today, I would have I would have called you out as bold faced liars. There's no way to prove it other than what I wrote down here on this notepad that showed every <laughs> single one of these upsets. Had we recorded a day earlier, your notes you state. would have known. My notes state that all, all right. of these games are going down this way today. So let's uh see your stickers then, huh? Where'd you put your stickers at? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I let's didn't buy, I didn't buy any. Let's let's screen screen. <laughs> Screenshot, screenshot. Uh, CDS goes. I went with the okay. safer. I went with the safer picks on there. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so happy that I don't yeah. do stickers anymore. I've learned my lesson on those. I'm addicted, dude. It's my crack. I have to. Nah, man. I stopped maybe two majors ago. I stopped buying them, and once you once think, you cut it, it's good. Like once you step away from the drug, it's easy. Yeah, it's I easy. think mine were the E League. E League major was was the last time I got stickers. See, last so last year I didn't buy them last major because that's when they started this whole oh all these new teams can now consider majors and here's stickers so you can buy. Yeah. And 
I just like no. See, I had to end on a high because I got the gold pin for being in like the top one percentile yeah. for picking. So I was like, you know what? I've reached the mountaintop. I don't need to do this anymore. We'll talk about the games here in a second, but while we're on it, okay, because here's another reason why I don't feel like buying the stickers for me is worth it. Uh, other than cloud, like I'll buy a cloud nine stickers or, you know, I'll, <clears throat> I'll get at least like the major sticker. Right. But I, I feel like for being a major valve doesn't do a whole lot for the game. And I know we've talked about it before and I don't want to get bogged down with it. Right. But like, with it's boring Dota. it's like any other yeah like any other... i mean it's just it's a bracket i mean you can go to a website you can go to our twitter at the center ring.com and fill out your own bracket well you'll have a chance to win a hundred dollar steam gift card well, plugging what? that in yeah. do you see that natural plug that's what I we like call it. a professional <laughs> that was plug. good i can't even like i gotta at least call out my shot after i did that one because we get a chance at winning it absolutely absolutely I don't, look i don't do those little baby games where it's like oh you're part of the show it's unfair if we win no way if i know bro if i pick a perfect bracket i'm keeping that 100 <laughs> steam gift card i'm telling you that right now and he's gonna uh, buy stickers too and then i'll go back and buy stickers <laughs> <laughs> but no that is true so if you want you can fill out a bracket not right now but when we get through the challenger stage and we're on to the championship stage the champion is that stage, what it's called can, it's called champion stage yeah that's the bracket Champions, stage. Yeah. So you can fill out your own bracket for TCR on challenge.com. You can go there, make an account, and fill it out, win some Steam gift cards, and be a happy camper. Beck, I digress, though. Like, Valve is... I'm, and I'm even seeing this. So, like, I'm at work. So the majority of the day, I'm watching my stream on mute, okay? So that that's a disclaimer there. But it's like... The UI doesn't look that fancy for whatever reason this time. I feel like with the last major PGL did, which was that last, did PGL do Boston? No, E-League did Boston. So yeah, PGL yeah. did the one before that. There was such a mess with everything that they had. Like they, it was so produced and overproduction that maybe, maybe they're taking a step back. I, I think Anuj, you said it last <laughs> week. I won't throw stones until we get into the stadium. Yeah. 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 But this, there's nothing special about this. Yeah, go ahead, Brett. Yeah, I mean, they're taking a step way back, though. Um, I mean, a lot of what we do is we compare CSGO to Dota, which is is impossible to win any sort of, like, comparison argument between those yeah, two. Yeah, you're just uh, not. Esports. And to be fair, but, it's a terrible comparison for that reason. Right, right. So they're taking. I feel like they're taking a step way back because I, I, I've been watching quite a bit of this. And, you know, just... You know, the overall production, you know, how the analysts are doing, what have you. But it just feels like it's so casual, right? Like, it's just like just dudes in a bar talking Counter-Strike and aliens and uh, uh, abductions and unicorns. And, you know, I'm like, I'd like a little bit of production, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, it just feels too casual to me. I don't know. Yeah, kind of like what I was saying, you know, even last week is give me some like player info, you know, in between. Talk about like, you know, they do the background stories randomly or a player profile preview or something like that. Go into more in-depth statistics, you know, something that you can break down more. Um, talk maybe more about specific clips from the game. So like click the highlight plays and go back and analyze those some of the, during some of these tech timeouts that you see instead of a lot of the banter that you, you currently get. As far as production goes, again, you know, I will wait till we're on stage to see what, you know, what the final judgment is on that. Um, yeah. it's a little dull right now, but they're sitting in what looks like a hotel room with a face. <laughs> it may be, you know, we've been to those group stages where it, it literally is in a hotel lobby. Yeah. It's it's all, in the back. yeah. yeah. There's not a whole lot there visually to look at, but the, the games have been great. I mean, like we're getting a lot of good, not as many strike. tech delays yeah. today, not, yeah, now, not nearly as many. I have read that that's because so at the major the client they're playing on is solely built from Valve. So that's not just like the normal CS:GO client that like you and me play on, right? It's completely separate. Valve builds it for the major for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe it's cuz they have all the stats or whatever built in. I have no idea. But in the Challenger stage, you know, a lot of the tech issues were because players weren't able to hear footsteps properly or the grenades properly. 
Um, even like voice comms were goofing up. It's just it, the audio, they were having audio issues. That was the major issue. And being that it was Valve's client, face it, couldn't really just go in and fix it and do stuff as simple. So Valve had to do a hot fix the day before the legend stage to fix these issues. And from what yeah. I've seen, it looks like it helps. But I'm going back to the point where, and they it said it, now this is the article speaking, it said that when Valve sent them the client and they set up everything, they didn't even have like time to test the clients. They just sent it to face it and said, here you go. This is it. Like, like run it and go. Yeah, and clearly it wouldn't have taken much testing to see these tech issues when they happen every single match, right? So I, I don't know. It's just, it's, that goes down to the fact though that like this is a major that we're talking about, right? Like how are we sending non-tested equipment like players are complaining anuj do you know the player um that tweeted out saying that he hopes esl gets every major from here on out no i know what you're referring to but there's been tons of player complaints like throughout yeah. twitter it's been from almost one representative from every team has come out and said something but again it's not this is not a face it issue so to come out and say yeah, i hope esl gets every major what, what does that have to do with the fact that Val sent them a bad client, you know, I don't yeah. think we've seen technical issues in terms of the, you know, network MSL. connection being bad. I think MSL okay. tweeted it out. Well, he has a lot of time to tweet because he's yeah, he does. Right now, so <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Uh, you, you, you should spend that time, you know, uh, in in DM just pra practicing your spray patterns or something like that. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't, I don't put this on. Here it is. I have it right here. Necessarily. Uh, so it was MSL from from North that uh, tweeted this out. Honestly, the worst major I have ever attended. Bad FPS whole tournament. Bad headset first two rounds. Can't hear footsteps of teammates and opponents. Using 20 minutes in a deciding game to qualify on testing footsteps when you rely so much on sound uh, that's not working. This is not the reason we lost, blah, blah, blah. And I hope ESL gets all majors so we can keep, so we can not be disappointed. One of the things that I saw that Ye tweeted out, Ye from Complexity, is there were issues with FPS drops. And he thought he figured it out. He seems like a technical dude. So props to him, first of all, because like he was talking over my head. But he, he said he figured out that it's something with the um, Alienware PCs that they have. That he thinks it's causing a stuttering issue because of the Alienware PCs run like crap. Shocked! Yeah. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> so he what is this? The year a, 2000? I, it's pretty crazy though if that is the case. Like if if there's a PC issue and not just a client issue, now you combine the two, that makes for a pretty nasty setup. But not a whole lot can be done right at this moment. I mean, they're no. gonna play with what they have and go from and, there. You know, besides all that, let's not. I don't want to. I don't want to sour the show, getting salty about major setups and tech issues and everything, because we could go on for days about it. We seriously could, and you know what? It probably isn't the last time there's going to be tech issues in the major, so we'll talk about them when they happen. But for today, I do want to get into some of these matchups because they were insane. You started the day off with G two and Hellraisers going into yet again another overtime. G2 winning 22 to 20. And this was one of the few games that kind of... So G2 was automatically qualified, right? So technically they were a favorite going in just by standard wise. But I would think going into it, Hellraisers was a favorite. I would put money that majority of people were betting on Hellraisers to win it. Um, just because the way G2 has looked leading up to this event you haven't seen much of them with this new lineup having smiths in there and, and you know the changes that they've recently made um hell Ragers was coming in hot having to win their final match to get in and there's a lot of excitement around them this is a big win for g2 i think this is a uh, one of those catalyst type games because i don't know what they expected from themselves either um going on to dust two it's been a common pick for the you know any french team for a long time now so i think they they have to be feeling pretty good unfortunately this is one of the few games i didn't get to watch um today just because of the time that it was on but i'll, I'll definitely go back and check it out but it looks like it was i mean g2 played well obviously and, mm -hmm. and came out alive yeah and it's poor hellraisers right like i mean they played pretty well in the group stage and in the in the uh, the first stage of the major 
And uh, they need somebody else to step up other than Issa, uh, Issa and uh, Woxic because they were the hard carries in that group stage too, in the first stage. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they can get anything else out of those other three guys, I mean, I feel really good um, about feel... them at least winning a couple of games in, in this uh, you know new new legend stage. This is ge very generic sports point that I'm about to make, but oh. I feel like Hellraisers is the new flip side where they will always be there, but they will never progress. They will never be the flashy team beating the high, higher tier teams. You know, it's just, I just get that vibe from them that they're never going to have the complete roster to, to compete against, you know, the tier one teams. Well, this is in the, this they're is in the a, right region. <laughs> But this is also a team that will compete with tier one teams. Like, th don't be surprised if this team. Walks I think they'll out compete. Of... I don't think they'll win. Yeah, I mean, but that's hard to say for any team, right? Who's guaranteed to win right now? Not even Astralis, you know, even after today. Like, nobody's good enough right now. And in, that's including FaZe and these guys. And we'll talk about them as we go. But nobody's playing good enough right now to tell me that they're like guaranteed to win. I think this is one of the more open majors we have where we're not walking in with a clear cut favorite, which makes it super exciting. But I really don't see there being like one team at this point that's hands down, you know, they're steamrolling through. This. No, is that opinion based off of today's matches? No, that, that opinion was going in. I mean, you look at M I MIBR, you look at FaZe in their last tournament. Uh, Mouse Sports has been trickling off recently. Astralis is the one team that you've seen some consistency out of, but even then, we've seen them lose, you know, prior to a finals here just in the last, I'm drawing a blank on the last tournament, but there's nobody that I felt like was a dominant, heavy, you know, heavy hitter favorite. I felt like it was a really open field, not this open. I didn't see nearly this many upsets, you know, coming, but I felt like there was four or five teams that were competing for, you know, for a chance to win it. So in the next matchup, you did have Liquid versus Windstrike. Liquid winning 16-7. Um, I think that was probably one of the easier... I mean, it was. It, that, they got the easiest matchup of the day. Yeah, that would have been, been the I, most shocking. I feel like minus two other teams in this tournament, they probably would have won anyways. I mean, they they impressed, you know, in the, the, uh, the first part of the tournament. And, you know, outside of maybe like a an Astralis or, well... I would say phase, but they lost today. But outside of those two teams, I feel like they would have competed well against pretty much anybody else in this tournament. For I mean, Liquid? lucky for them, they got win strike. Yeah, for Liquid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we even talked about it last episode where like Liquid is looking as going into the major one of the at least more solid teams. You know, as far as just being consistent, their roster is one of the more elder rosters as far as yeah. being teammates together. So and and. and no, go ahead, Tim. I was just going to bring up the fact that when NAF has a ADR of 119, the, hey, you're if you can probably get anything going out to of win. that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we talk about this. We've talked about this, you know, on several, you know, CS episodes where continuity is a huge thing. I mean, it's not only us saying it, it's other players too. Uh, I mean, they, they give that excuse uh, for a loss. Uh, when they were talking about uh, MIBR with the two new additions, you know, they were, constantly getting excuses from other pros like hey this is a new roster give them some slack you know it's just one game but i mean continuity plays a big part and like you said tim liquid's got that going for him right now so yeah they're they're four and oh in the majors so far now they've got to be you know riding as high as possible i think their tomorrow's matchup has already already said and it's not a, not an easy one for them but they are playing so well and, and obviously as a, a north american fan we're really trickling down our numbers quickly here so and what you yeah but you know what i mean in general like i, I mean I'm, I'm gonna root for liquid to do well i would like to see a north american team advance to the to the finals you know final round here so they're, they're playing really good there's not a whole lot you know I think to deep dive into this game, this was an expected win. Um, had they lost it, this would have been a, you know a lot more to talk about. But yeah, they came out and they came out in convincing, convincing victory. They're playing really well yeah. on the and I, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see. Speaking of one to talk about, then here we go. Phase versus Big. Phase is an easy win, right? No doubt, Phase would win this. 
big it ended up one of those hitters. Big ended up not, not only winning, right? Like I could like if you told me, oh, big one in overtime, nineteen sixteen or whatever, I'd be like, okay, well, that sucks. You know, they're they're hot, they're hot right now. But to beat Faze sixteen to five on Dust Two, which I know was Faze's, was it Faze's pick or did they just not veto it? Yeah, no, it was it was Faze's pick. It was um. I don't well actually I don't, maybe we can it was it was yeah. phase removed inferno so dust two was left over yeah yeah so yeah I, it was their pick interesting pick against a, a team like big they got a an opera and smuya who would play really well on a map like that who's also an unconventional player like it's almost weird the way big does it big has four players that play a very um standard set you know they play more mechanic based and then they let smuya kind of play the pug star style game and let him run around the whole map with an op and it's it's really interesting 16 is a blowout win i mean that's a dominant yeah. win against a team like phase um interested to see where they go from here because again today falling into the losers bracket meant a lot i mean it meant you have the potential for some really tough matchups and so and, and they that have was a hard matchup. They, I was they, say, they, like, yeah. it was with all the upsets that happened today, and you know, I don't, I, I, we don't have to like beat around the bush, right? Everyone knows the results. We're just using the results as an excuse to talk about each matchup and team. But FaZe was the first one to fall as far as like giant team goes. Yeah. The fact though that when like you saw MIBR lose, Mouse Sports, and Navi, Fnatic, that's the, that's the losing bracket. Yeah. Like, do you think was, Faze, like Faze is just sitting in the back like why 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 yes. yeah I mean and it was hilarious watching the draw too this guy they were like man you know what if I, I think the announcers call or the analysts call it it's like what if what if we get um you know a, a Navi phase uh matchup boom Navi boom phase there it is and then the next one it was like uh, mouse gets drawn it was like oh my god what if mibr gets drawn and then boom mibr gets drawn it's like oh my god one of these two of these guys are going to be o2 yeah that's really crazy I and mean, you're fighting an uphill battle you got to win three games in a row wouldn't you take the field on somebody from the losers bracket winning this major versus somebody from the 1-0 bracket right now just looking at the two sides just take the field I, I like would, one of them will win yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's oh, yeah. really what Astralis, possibly Liquid on that side. Um, that's really all I see over there. I can name five teams on this side that, that you got Navi, I mean, Navi, Phase, Cloud9. Mouse, obviously. Brazil, I mean, there, there's enough. Fnatic has enough experience to. to you know why, pull though? It's because out. those teams have history, they have skins on the wall. You know, yeah. all those other teams, like you said, minus Astralis, right? They're the outlier for today. They're the only team that actually did what they were really supposed to do against a, a comparable team, right? Yep. But all those other teams, Navi, MIBR, uh, formerly SK pretty much, FaZe Clan, Fnatic, all of them have skins on the wall to where you're like, you can never count them out, especially at majors where they just always seem to pull it out. But here... To Brett's point, some of these guys are going to be no matter what, zero and two tomorrow. Yeah. It's like, and hmm. and if you th if you think about it, even the even the teams that win that game, like you look at the potential like matchups for tomorrow and the teams that could win. Like, what if like that liquid uh, the liquid nip match is interesting, right? Like one of those teams is going to be uh, one and, and one losers. playing playing either phase, you know. So even if you win that that oh one game you're you still have the potential to go up against somebody you know super tough it, it's gonna it's be just, crazy because you're gonna have either a big or tyloo moving to two and oh complexity or g2 moving to two or two and oh please let um, it be complexity you know oh my li God. and liquid nip i mean like it's gonna be even crazy on the two oh side just as much as it's gonna be on the o2 side to see like i mean could you believe if tyloo comes out of here smoke in the bracket you know i mean there's I, I felt like this was just the opposite of what most people thought was going to happen today and so it's going to make tomorrow it's going to make tomorrow a crazy day and it's not a bad thing though like this is no. this is why okay so i know and i know we've complained about it in the past right 
why we don't like the Swiss format, but this is why you do love it, right? This is when the Swiss format is fun. You're not having the best teams there, but it's when you get the upsets involved. And then, I mean, today you had multiple upsets. So that's where I think the Swiss format really shines where you're like, okay, now the possibilities of who's playing who throughout these this stage of the tournament like yeah. you're you're gonna have it to where top teams aren't making top eight, and that's just by by luck yeah. of the draw. And a big part of our you know our complaint is like somebody's gonna have an easy road. Somebody's gonna have an easy road. But if you look at the first day, the only team you could look at and say, yeah, they won the day. They got lucky with the draw was Liquid. Yeah, like I was that's to say, the Liquid only team you can look the, at. But even then, they had Hellraisers and and Vega. Two teams. I mean, Vega is. Well, I'm just talking about. I'm just talking about this stage. Like oh, day oh, okay. One. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Day one. Or today. Right. Look, but even you talk about draws. You're gonna hear people complain about that. But you, you look at MIBR and Tai Lu, right? The draw favored MIBR in this case pretty heavily to most people. They also had an 11-2 lead in that map. And yeah. came back and lost it. Oh. So, like, I don't want to hear about, like, oh, this one had an easy one or this one had a tough one. Like, you got to go and win the games that you're in, ultimately. You're going to play against the best teams when it comes down to it at the end of the day. And I think this shuffle that we see here now creates this fun chaos for all of us to, like, go out and and see what happens. But I don't think, you know, the complaints are always going to come regardless of the format unless there's, like, a true seeding style and all that done, but I don't. I don't think Counter Strike ever goes that route. So, but then other people are going to complain about like, why is this team a, a two seed? You know, yeah. Or like this, then you get there's college always football. Be there, there's too there. many tournaments that yeah. are not standardized with all the teams there to have a proper ready. Well, and, and we golf, also see the issue too, where I mean, there are teams that will take the whole month off before a major, not playing in anything. So it's like, okay, yeah. well, does that affect their ranks? Or then you look at like people like Thorin, where he doesn't include any online play, right? He only looks at recent lands, which that to me is not the best way to do it when, you know, 60% of your matches are online. So why are we only including ones that are, are land? But yeah. there's no perfect system, right? It's just, this way we can at least enjoy the chaos this time around. Um, you did have complexity, upset fanatic, and again, 16-4. Like these upsets are not close upsets. It wasn't like some team had to grasp, you know, everything they had to fight out of it. 16 to 4, they ended up beating Fnatic. This match was lost in the map pick. It exists for being a senior whatever you want to call him, um, dumb, dumb map pick. Complexity won all of their matches on Inferno. That's all they've really been playing. You knew they wanted it going into this match. They were so comfortable on it. Um, they came off of some big wins in the challenger stage. And what do you do? You have an opportunity to ban that pick and you just throw it out there again for them. And they've shown over and over again, they know how to play the sites. They know how to trade kills on that map. Shazam plays really well in aggressive opping style on that map, which is not usually how I associate him as a player, but he does so good on Inferno. And I just don't understand why you leave that in the map pool. And they did, and it cost them big time because this was a match that Fnatic definitely was heavily the favored in to, and know, I, going into the game. And I, and I say good riddance. They have two nip rejects on their team. I hope they lose all. I hope like, they lose Inferno all their Inferno cost a lot of people the matches today. It's getting... Inferno and Mirage are this, so far, the darlings of this major. It's the cobblestone of this major. And Inferno is the upset special map. Like it that's is, where we're it seeing is. a lot. And of I them. think like I, it's crazy to me seeing how many teams struggle on B site on that. It was Navi today um, on Astralis, and it's like where they're holding is awful. They had um, Simple, and I want to say Flamey. We're sitting, you know, where the boost is on the flower pot. Mm -hmm. Both of them are sitting right there. Astralis literally smoked it off, killed one, and walked right on the site. And Navi never even tried to retake Had or contest. Chance. Yeah, because, because it's like you left the site. Them. Yeah, you left the site open. But it, it's not just Navi. Like so many 
so many teams struggle on on that B it's side. A, it's a tough map to defend because the rotation is long. And so it becomes a guessing game. The way I've seen most of these teams play it um, is they're shuffling back and forth. They take the chance with you know, yeah. soloing a guy you know, temporarily at B and having one guy kind of push over. You're playing purely off of sound, off of smokes, um, off of a team's execute. You're seeing a lot of people double up arch side to trade kills there. I think you're also um, seeing a lot more saves, though, because of that. Because they, they know, like, once you lose a site on Inferno, it is really hard without utility to try and retake a site. You, you can't, especially with Pit. The way Pit is designed is you have to be able to either smoke it off or molly it off at some point to get into the site because there's somebody down there every single round. And it's just um, it's a tough map to defend, but there's a lot of options for both teams. And so I think that's why you can see it flip from one side to the other pretty quick because once momentum and utility and money becomes a part of the game which is such a big part of the pro scene is how is you know where are you at financially with your your team um in you know in game obviously yeah uh, makes such a big difference on that map and that's why you see these big swings and big upsets and complexity has a favorable matchup tomorrow they're up against g2 yep. i think that's one of the more favorable matchups they could have gotten um so they could they're i mean they're looking at a possible two and oh going into uh into this stage which what i mean what kind how of shocks are you gonna see you know are you yeah see like how insane would that again? be right complex like i don't yeah like i don't think yeah, anyone yeah. gave them the time of day to honestly think like yeah sure you have your na fanboys and you know we're saying it kind of tongue-in-cheek and everything here but like in your heart like would you have thought complexity you would have even made it this far you just no, never really saw like them you know, even in challenger stage, it was like, can they get a win or two and be competitive um, and come out of that tough challenger stage? I mean, not, we, I don't think anyone thought they were coming out of that stage, let alone being in this one. We're so excited for them and we're thrilled that they're there. But yeah, it's like 100% a surprise. They had two people just kicked off of Optic, you know, come onto this team and work with three younger players. And um, Def has played out of his mind. Um, he's been fantastic for him same with yay i mean it's, it's cool to watch them because they are young and complexity is a you know fan favorite in cs in terms of older cs players so it's cool to see them come back and have a chance 2-0 would really be crazy for them and it's not out of the realm of possibility no i nip would be the crazier 2-0 i think i don't think anyone even i mean not crazier i should say but in the sense of Again, hopes weren't high going into the major necessarily. I don't think. Um, no. And they beat they yeah, beat Mouse sixteen weren't. to twelve on Mirage. Yeah, yeah. but they Tough look, win. Yeah, Mouse though hasn't been playing. I don't know. See, it's weird. So I remember when we talked to Rops at uh, ESL Dallas, and he even admitted that he never really felt like he was like the second best team in the world. It's just other teams yeah. were playing poorly at that time, and so they looked better for it. Right. So like I wanna say Mouse is hasn't been playing like up to their standards, but realistically this is their kind of standards, right? Like he even almost said it, like we're not a number two team. They and especially here, they just got snacks, right? So you already had a struggling team with a new roster. And kind of to go back, I don't think any of us saw them as a true number two either, right? Like it's not no. just them that felt. No, bad. I think I everyone think, saw it. Know. I mean that's that's the whole reason why we even asked the question of saying, like, okay, well, but they were performing they like good. a top five team, right? Like it's not yeah. out of the question to say, hey, they're a top five team. And Nip was looking more like a top 20 team. You know, even going into the major, I wouldn't have said, hey, they're a top 10 team coming in. So um, still a, a big upset in that sense. Mouse, again, hadn't been playing well, but they're still on paper the better team and they have just as much tenure and familiarity building up on that yeah. side in Counter-Strike terms. So... Yeah, I, I feel like for Nip to go on, they're going to have to have something not like what they had, at, you know, against Mouse Sports, where everyone contributed. I mean, you see, get right, he was he had like um, a KD over, uh, he was five over KD, but I mean, he had a four K in that last round to seal it off, so he was close to being, you know, even keeled there. They're going to need somebody to just go insane. They're playing on that team for them to have too. a chance. 
Yeah. yeah. They're well designed though. I mean, with Dennis being the pistol master, you hope you grab pistol rounds with him. Um, Rez has been, I think, the key, Rez and Lecro, both of them playing consistently well. I feel like they need to be your carries and it you know, probably shouldn't be get right or even forced at this point in their career. Um, Rez is supposed to be their young star. So for them to get a win without him performing at you know, his best today was big. And now who do they got tomorrow? Liquid. Liquid. Liquid yeah, yeah, like that's that's Doesn't not going to be easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> but at the same time, it's not going to shock me if they come away with a win either. I don't think it's a they're huge I mean, underdogs after the I don't think at this in. point, man, after today, I don't think anything can shock you. Yeah. Because you've seen it where and like I said, it's not that these other teams are are playing poorly. You know, you look at uh some of the upsets we talked about, complexity, uh big Tyloo, right? Tyloo actually looks legit when they beat MIBR. I know yeah. Yeah. I know they dropped a bunch of games. Uh, what you were saying, they were up by 11 at one point. Uh, was MIBR scoreline? was up like 11-2 or something. 11-2. Even 12-2, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, for that to happen, you have to play well. And you watch Ty Lue. Ty Lue even impressed me in the last stage. So, they who does Ty Lue have tomorrow? Big, as we mentioned. Big. Tomorrow, you have Vega and Astralis. Uh, Astralis ended up defeating Na'Vi. Vega whooped up on Cloud9. Who just looks like they're they're ready to go home? Out of all the, <laughs> out of all the teams today, Cloud Nine looked the worst. Yeah, yeah, there was no hope at any point in that game. You knew pretty quickly it became a runaway, and um, it it sucks to see it get to this point now because they they have a decent lineup. It's not like the lineup is you know Golden is a, is a good in game leader, proven. Um, there's not enough there. I don't feel the chemistry with this team that you saw with previous iterations of cloud nine. Um, it just seems like a hodgepodge kind of. It, it seems group. like they all know they're on a temporary roster. That's what it's like. They're, they know that golden and, and psycho or sicko or however you say his name. They, they all know they're not going to stick around, you know, skadoodle, I think every time you have a, a loss in a major, you're still having that rumor of like, oh, okay, is this going to be it? Is this when he decides to go? You know, so they just look like they're ready to be done with the major, go home, rework this roster, and figure out. But that's the thing, like, I don't know how you rework it. You there's have options. the core. No, there's there's a lot of options out there. Either you pay for Cirque or you. You try and pull a, you know, you try and pull a, a nifty or somebody because Renegades is gonna make changes. Renegades has had three years almost together with this roster. It's kind of insane how long some of these players have been on this team. You'll be able to pull somebody from there. I don't think it's necessarily gonna turn into the top tier one lineup, but I, I think you do what you did when you brought in players like Stewie, Shroud. You brought in players that were maybe a little bit more. You know, Nifty and these guys are obviously well known, but a little bit more still on the unknown the young, side. Right. Um, I mean, that is true and, though. That's that's how they got Stewie. Yeah, grow it, grow some team chemistry here, because right now it does. You don't feel the chemistry in this lineup. There's too many gaps of where Sky is professionally compared to where Rush is focusing on, compared to you know Styco and and Golden both probably not wanting to play here or or with this group of players. If you're going to come to C9 and you know, move countries. I'm assuming you want to do that for a more powerful lineup than what they have. So, yeah, I agree. I, I, they need to just start fresh. You can keep a couple of the players, but you got to, this has to be a rebuild. I think this you, you build around automatic and rush, right? You tell the other three, thanks for your service, and you build around automatic and rush. It all comes down to money, right? Like how you much have do they to want have, to spend yeah. to buy out? You're going to be buying out a lot of players if you're going to do this. Whether yeah. it's Narte or um, or Nathan, whatever the heck he goes by, Nifty, Cirque, however you want to do it, there's players out there. That's if they go I, I would, with the seasoned people, though. Yeah, I would like to see Nifty on this roster. Just, you know, someone fresh, you know, young to kind of take over, you know, to for Skadoodle just to pass that torch to you, right? Like, I think that would be. I wouldn't a mind if they. If they went completely young roster, though, 
and just went with the expectation. Like when they got picked up Stewie, you know, nothing said like, look, this isn't going to be a, you know, Tomorrow. three tournament type of thing. Yeah, like you, you're going to probably see this is going to take six, eight, 12 months to, to really work on because he's new. You know, yeah, he yeah. plays rank S or whatever it was at the time, but you and have to good, have that expectation. And good luck in today's Counter Strike to give a team eight to twelve months to to get but better. Cloud, Cloud Nine bought themselves so much. That major win, like that, gives you so long. Like you're, yeah. you're you're in a to finally get one in North America. If this was another team, if this was Fnatic, I would tell you, yeah, you can't do that. If this was, um, you know, Astralis, it'd be hard to do that. But the way that they're set up right now, I think fans would be more excited about having a younger team in something that they can root for down the line versus what you have right now and you know you're not going to go anywhere with this lineup if you keep it, right? I, I would be more excited and, for and it. And I do more. think there is this misconception or there's this theory, right, that anyone from EU is good, right? Just sign this guy here because he, he played for an EU team. He was on NIT before, yeah. so he's got to be better than what we have over here. And I don't think that's necessarily the case because like a new, like you were stating, these guys are moving over here. They could say, yeah, man, let's do this. I'm ready to go. But then when they get here, right, they pull a simple and think, oh, you know what? Not, not really digging, living in the States. Right. Yeah. And that messes with their mental state and then team chemistry from there. I would like to see them go young NA players and, and like, you said I would be per as a as a Cloud Nine fan. I'd be more excited for that than picking up some EU scraps that just didn't work out. Yeah, I agree. and maybe I don't, does, do we know where Nifty lives? He's he's US, Detroit is he? in Australia. I mean, he's in a <laughs> just commutes from Detroit just, to Australia all he's the time. In Detroit and Australia, that's it. <laughs> I know he is that, American. I just didn't know. If, I don't. I don't. Man. I don't know where Renegades is based out of. Does anyone? They're an Australian Detroit. team. No, they're the Detroit Renegades, <laughs> owned by a Swedish dude who plays in Boston. Last I checked in basketball, but they're an Australian team. I mean, they they have two Americans yeah. on the team. I don't know. I don't know where they're based off of. Either way, that's that's what I think. Cloud Nine should go in that direction in the future. Uh, they play Hellraisers tomorrow. I don't see that going any differently. No. no. You want to do some predictions for tomorrow? Or the rest of this setup Yeah, here? I mean, we could just lightly talk about who we might think make it out. Yeah, because it's tough in the Swiss system because it's random. Okay, so yeah, let's, so try, much let's try it this way. We got we got one game out of the way, right? So we know what tomorrow's lineups are. So give me your, your 3-0 teams. Instead All right. of going through full predictions, okay. I, I want there's your 3-0s two, and I want your There's two 3-0 teams. All right, there's two teams going 3-0. Yep. Give me Astralis. Man, I'm going to I'm going to do such weak Astralis and Liquid. That's such a cop out and I know it. <laughs> I know like that's not like a risky pick at all, but I No, think no, no, you're good. I mean, that's, that's the best I think we can you could go with right now. Brett, who do you got 3-0? I've crunched the numbers. I brought out the calculator. <laughs> looked at the stats. Looking at they looked at the stats. Nip is going to be one of my 3-0 teams. And then Astralis. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Astralis is like the the give me. It's like it it would be insane if they didn't go three zero. But you know what? We said that last round until Nip beat them. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> like we all yeah. said that last round, and look what happened. So I'm using a TI eighty nine plus right now. Dang. I'm pretty sure I can't mess this up, but I am gonna go with what's Astralis. the tan. What's the tan and sand on that? Astralis is coming out number one, and I'm going big is taking the other three out of spot. Really? I think big's playing well. I think against Ty Lu tomorrow, let's be real, you're going to see either Dust 2 or Inferno on that map. For both teams, you're going to want that. Um, I think big's got a little bit of a better squad comparative, so I think that puts them in a good position to be at least 2-0. And then who knows with the draw that you get. That's This is the part that makes it difficult, right? We don't know who they play if they win at this point, right? Gonna have yeah, because you have to look here too. Room. Like in the lower bracket, Windstrike and Fnatic are playing each other. Meaning yeah. one of those are going to be winners. Playing another winner. And I mean, either one of those teams, I think anyone would want to play against. 
So you do have weak teams here. going in. Hmm. My this gives o- you a chance, Tim, before you say anything. This gives you a chance to stay on the streak to at least pick Cloud9 for something. Ah, something. It might not be for the win, <laughs> but for something. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, I think my zero and three, wind strike, mm-hmm. and I watched the film. I ran the tape. I made phone calls. I think Cloud Nine will be your zero <laughs> and three losers. <laughs> that is your TCR. <laughs> Lock of the major. Cloud nine going 03, and then they're going <laughs> to get the hell on that plane and go home. They're not even going to stay for fan signing. Is this signing. a clean sweep, Brett? Are we going with the clean sweep here? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, you can't really like not pick win strike, and the way Cloud Nine's looked, you they're almost a given to. So, yeah, give me Cloud Nine and win strike to be my 03 teams of the tournament, the tourney. Gentlemen, I'll be uh, following that path. Yeah. It's weird, though. With, unfortunately, right? going with Cloud9 and Windstrike. You know, I, I tweeted this out earlier today. How much would both teams, MIBR and Cloud9, love to just start back over? Give Go with the players that you had. Obviously, Taco is not coming back, but I think Taco was so much more instrumental to MIBR than they ever could have imagined he played all the difficult positions you know played true but you know what though that's not breaking news like people said that the moment there were talks of him leaving it's like that dude has been a team player this whole time and now you're you're letting him go like that wasn't that's not a surprise to them five stars just doesn't work it's hard to do that phase is one of the few teams that's kind of overcome you know dealing with having that many personalities but Man, to go back like six, eight months from now and look at where both of these teams were to where they are now, um, you know, MIBR obviously being the more shocking. I think Cloud9, we all saw a huge decline coming as soon as uh, Tarek and, and Stewie left. I don't think it's any surprise. You saw it as soon as the major was over. As soon, yeah, as, I mean, as, soon as Boston was, they never had a, a positive moment after they won the major. No. And, and that really wasn't their doing, though. MIBR, you can look at them and say, you made your bed, now you lie in it. But you look at Cloud9, and, and you're like, man, that is unfortunate that Tarek and Stewie went on to play on a team that sucks now. Like, it's, yeah, t- Tarek it's a- went because he saw the writing on the wall. I think once Stewie left, it was like, okay, yeah, we're not going to be able to replace him with that type of talent right now. Tarek jump ship. I, I just again, but for MIBR, it, it's so shocking that this is where they're at right now. Like this is, I don't know how many more tournaments you can go on after the major if you really come out of here not even advancing past this stage, at least not getting like true legend status. Um, and yeah. what our minds would be legend status? I know they're all in that you know, what? next I mean, stage or whatever, but yeah. And we look at what ifs. Like Mouse is not an easy w uh what if what if um uh phase lose to navi they're o2 and you're playing them o2 yeah they could go o3 like there is an easy scenario where they go o3 and we're looking at them like yeah that post major roster shuffle when's that happening they're not going to get an easy matchup even if they win this this one right you're still playing against a phase or an hr or a fanatic or potentially a g2 a big t you know team liquid there's so many teams that could potentially be will be one and one that they're just going to have an uphill climb and we're not seeing positives like i don't feel like we're seeing right that's what i was just about to say it's like it's weird that at this point in their roster, you would have thought you would have at least seen some something click to play with yeah. them. And there just there hasn't been. I know people were trying to make a big deal that they won that was it the Zotac? Is that how you say it? The Zotac Cup? Yeah. You yeah. beat Kingwin. Like that's the team you took first place in. And people were like, Oh, see, they finally got a win under the roster. Like, no, no, stop it. Like, do not give me that. With this Kingwin roster, you have no you have not seen anything from this roster. Yeah, there's 
no light at the end of the tunnel from the fan base perspective. Like you just haven't seen anything since the team has been put together to make you believe, hey, we're turning a corner. You hear all the right things that, you know, we're pugging, we're scrimming, we're, you know, they're putting in the time. These guys are not streaming. So, you know, they're working hard. That's the crazy part. They're boot camping like crazy. They probably shouldn't have boot camped against C9. I would have recommended a better team to to probably boot camp against um they probably felt really good coming out of most of those scrims. I'm not going to lie. Like it's, it's hard to believe they lost many. Um, and that was a tough challenge for them. And now, you, now you're in it, you know, and now you're going to be clash, you know, scratching and clawing to stay alive. And it all, it all starts tomorrow for them. Yeah. And, and you look at them and they're not resting on their morals. I mean, even that, that move that they made, you know, getting Tarek and, and Stewie, they, in their heart of hearts thought that that was going to be an improvement to the team. Um, they went out and got Yanko as a head coach thinking, you know, this is going to be a positive move for the team. So for whatever reason, it's just unfortunately not working out for them. So, uh, and sometimes that happens. Odd. Yeah. So I just, it is what it is. And again, they could go and win three rounds in a row and, and then we're not talking about and it. We're, anyway. No one brings it up. <laughs> so. You know, they could go and win the, the major and all of a sudden everyone's like, see, this is why they did it. And they knew it. Then we, so. then we just burn the tape, burn the tape. <laughs> we said we it all along. They were fine. We <laughs> so we'll get into that, though, uh, next week when we talk about the champion stage, talking about all the teams that uh, moved on. But again, if you do want to hear our thoughts in between the stages, join our discord. We're in there. Hit us up and we'll talk about it. Not a whole lot of e-news going on, e-sports news. Um, really just what happened over the weekend, Overwatch League World Cup. Oh, by the way, the eight teams that we talked about last week being unconfirmed, they were confirmed. We'll talk about that in a different episode. Uh, Overwatch League World Cup, the Los Angeles qualifiers wrapped up, and it was everything that we thought it would be, which is yeah. why I know people are upset that Blizzard's not really like pimping this out. But they know, right? This is all just getting to BlizzCon. Just get to BlizzCon, and we'll worry about these this year. Cause yeah, yeah, because yeah, I mean, we've talked. I mean, once you get to BlizzCon and you got those teams that are out of groups playing, then it's then it's a then it's a a free for all. Yeah, that's going to be a legit tournament. But I don't think it, it I mean, like South Korea is no US longer a lot. Canada was going to come out. Yeah, nor, yeah, South Korea is no especially in this current meta. And you got all those young studs, you know, for example, from the U.S., Zachary uh, playing in this uh, cup. He's not able to play in Overwatch League because he's 17, but he's a super stud. You know, the playing field is more even in this uh, World Cup. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Have either of y'all ever been to BlizzCon? No. No. That's definitely we, on my... We'll have to make that like a TCR bucket list, I think. Yeah. That should get thrown onto it. There are a few things on my TCR bucket list. BlizzCon, TI, and that's that's really it. E E3. <laughs> I want to do an E3. Oh, E3. E3, but that's not really eSports. I just want to do that. E3, I already have the excuse set up for y'all. It's my birthday weekend oh. every year. Well, that's what we talk about. Yeah, E3, yeah. my birthday's right around the corner, so we can make that happen. But I got some other E news if you want to throw it in there. I know we're a little course. light on E news today. Um, we have the COD beta going live for PC this weekend. Um, we will be playing in it. So if any of y'all want to join us, obviously hop into the Discord and let us know. We would love to join you. I believe the Battle Royale is what's uh, sick. Making and everybody really inside. like it, dude. And a lot oh of pros God. are even saying, like, you know, hey, if, if this turns into pros, like, you know, this could be a, a different offshoot for it. It's it a lot of people so are like, fast. It's so fast. You know, you can outrun that circle, and, you know, the weapons just seem really, like, fluid and nice. And it, I mean, it, everything about it, you can't really, I, I haven't really found anything to nitpick about it. No, and a lot like, of streamers it's are saying it's good. Of? What? It reminds me of a more polished Isles of Nine. Isles yeah. of Nine had a, a fast paced yeah. and map. It wasn't a big map like the COD map is. The COD no. map looks significantly bigger, but it seems like a more polished version of that. It's Everyone always said the question it. always was what happens when a triple A games make a battle royale? And we finally it get works the answer. Fine. And yeah. everyone <laughs> yeah. loves it. Even Dr. Disrespect optimized. is saying it's great, and he normally doesn't, you know, 
he, he speaks his mind, so he's normally not one who says, yeah, this game's great. So that's doing it. But, also, did you see this is not enough? I don't. This is it's mixed. There is the first announced Call of Duty tournament going on, and it is CWL. five on five. Yeah, not a CWL but event, but it's though. not CWL. It's just kind of like a promo tournament. So people are kind of yeah. like, well, what is this supposed to be? Like, is this the what fact CWL that they is haven't announced? It, it's a little ridiculous. I mean, you have to know rosters are already being shuffled and put together as if it's a four v four. I think teams know. Right? But they're really tweeting out. I mean, they're very active on Twitter saying that it's insane that they don't know right now. So I actually believe that they, they really have no clue and they're waiting for them to announce it. That needs to come out sooner rather than later. I hope personally see 5v5. That's, uh, I know. Me too. A lot I'm of people don't though. And, the the COD yeah. scene wants four on four. They don't want you to mess with their what they have going it's such a fast-paced game i mean they, they're gonna ultimately do what's right but to mix it up for a year for a cod that also feels different in so many senses because you have the br you know in there as well to kind of hype it up why not mix it up for a year if it sucks you can always move it back um one thing quick thing i want to mention also for fortnite fortnite announced their fall skirmish um, I believe Fortnite's putting ten million dollars into a six-part series for the fall skirmish, so they are tossing that money around. They're they're starting to use that hundred million relatively quick. And <laughs> again, their summer skirmish was really a, a big hit and did really well. So they're coming out with a uh, fall Meh. skirmish. Ten meh. million per se. It's more than CS is paying for a major. <laughs> I said meh. Good sir. And they're doing it, and they're doing it six times in like three months. So. I can't wait for the winner to win without getting a single kill and just out healing his opponent in the circle. It's oh, riveting gosh. stuff. Let's, we're it's gonna have riveting. to dive into that at some point. Riveting. He, he, just <laughs> he deserved it. He got one tenth of the prize pool for doing that for winning one out of six yeah, games. Yeah, like what was it twenty five thousand? He got. Yeah, it's it seems like a lot because COD pays crap. To you know, compared to what I mean, it seems like a lot. That's involved. a lot. Twenty-five thousand. It's, it's a well, it's a lot, but it's not a lot in terms of what the payout was. It was a very small percentage of the payout. Yeah. For I'm, winning a match. We'll see. It's it's the curse of the BR games, and no one has officially figured out the best way to do it. Maybe COD has. I highly doubt hey, it. There's still a circle. You can still die to nothing. <laughs> can still camp. It's uh. You can still you know, hide in a bush and wait until you're the final look, two. At this point, we gotta get. And I know we gotta end this here, but we gotta treat BR for what it is. It's a BR game. It's its own type of game. It's its genre now. It's not. Right. You know, it's not going anywhere. So it may not be our favorite, but it is what it is. At least we know what we're getting with the product. I hope COD does it right and we see something a little cooler and from what we're seeing on stream, if you haven't checked it out, all the popular streamers are streaming it, guys, so go check it out. Um, or it looks cool. You and, check out us this weekend. Or us <laughs> this weekend. Yeah, they are playing on PS4, so... Oh, gosh, it's hard to watch sometimes. Man, but... those long-distance fights with a controller. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you see it in Shroud's face or something like that, too, like the, the pain and agony as he sees all these kills that he's not getting. Um, but yeah, it comes out this weekend. If you have NVIDIA, you might get it for the GeForce yeah. experience. But yeah, going live Friday, and uh, I believe Tim will be streaming it, maybe on his I Twitter will. or his account or the TCR account. I but will. You can follow uh, at, at the Center Ring on Twitter and Twitch. Um, I think it's auto-hosting it, so you'll be able to check it out. Come hang out with me. Uh, I'll definitely be streaming that because uh, I get off of early work on Friday, too. So it all works out. Um, also, another little just show prep, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, the challenge brackets that we have going, we are, when it gets to the, ch uh, the champion stage, going to do where you can pick a bracket. Winner gets a $100 Steam gift card. You have to follow us on Twitter, and eventually you'll have to retweet a tweet that we send out there. But <laughs> that being said... That's for the next stage. We'll talk about it on the next episode a lot more. I'm taking the money. <laughs> Go for it. That is true. We are eligible to win. We're not doing that. We're not doing that mess. Thank you for joining us. 
on this edition of the center ring aka tcr aka your favorite esports podcast i don't know what brett's doing with his hands on the on twitch are you trying to high five is that what you're doing yeah high five all right all right <laughs> that's why no one watches us on twitch right there that's why no one watches us i do thank you again though for uh for tuning in to the center ring if you enjoyed it thank you <laughs> if you didn't thanks for listening it doesn't matter the listens all count the same so we don't have to worry about it hit us up on twitter at the center ring our website tcr.gg uh, has all of our discord all of our information on there so you can hit us up there what else am I missing I think that's it we will be back next week it will not be on Wednesday because we want to get it out in time for the bracket. Probably stage. Tuesday, right? At least Tuesday. At, yeah. Maybe Monday. Maybe Probably Monday. Monday. Maybe. Sunday. Yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out soon. You know, we're TBD. adults. We can make this decision by then. Uh, for our lo- listeners on the East Coast, be safe with the hurricane. We'll see you next time. Uh,